Here. Mr. Horgan. Here. Ms. Rodriguez. Here. Mr. Hanson. Here. Ms. Ryder. Here. And Mr. Parker. Here. So our first order of business, it's a joyous one. We have the oath of office uh, for Trustee Jasmine Fryer. Trustee Parker, Parker, will you do the honors? Please? Yes, I will. Perfect. Where's the flag at? Oh, okay, there you go. This flag's in the back today. We got the aye. Aye. State your name. Jasmine Fryer. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And that I, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Board of Trustees of Cleveland Public Library, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability, and in accordance, and in accordance with the laws, with the laws now in effect, now in effect, and here and after, and here and after, to be enacted, to be enacted during the term, during the term for which, for which I was appointed, I was appointed. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a pretty full schedule today, so there's going to be some things we're going to be moving out of order and such. So if you could just bear with us. Um, our first order of business is approval of the minutes of the Joint Finance Human Resource Committee meeting of November 15, 2022. If there's no additions or omissions, I move for uh, approval. Second. Sure. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Sackle? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. We will also be uh, moving for approval of the regular board meeting of 11 17, 2022. If there's no additions or omissions, I move for approval. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Sackle? Yes. Mr. Corgan. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Hanson? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Uh, we, we don't have no communications. We do have a couple of comments which we'll, discuss, we'll review later. Uh, so we're going to move into the Finance Committee report. Trustee Seifler, please. Uh, <clears throat> Exhibit 1, Resolution to Engage Land Studio Inc. to organize 2023. Also see the, also the art wall programs. Be it resolved that the Executive Director, CEO, or his designee is hereby authorized to enter into an agreement between the Cleveland Public Library and Land Studio Inc. for the spring 2023. Uh, <clears throat> also, in the amount of, not to exceed $200,000, which shall be charged to the Lockwood Thompson Fund account 22880103-53710, Professional Services, which agreement shall be subject the review and approval of the director of legal affairs so moved second we do have land studio oh, before, before we do have land studio with us to give a very short brief and erica marks who i introduced on tuesday as our new interim head of programming yeah. hello they have a very great uh presentation but i just want to say that we are excited about the uh, potential new exhibit for next year for 2023 and i'll let you take over thanks everyone Aaron Guido from land studio and um really excited about this year's proposal for the installation if you want to go to the next slide um we are proposing to work with um an artist Re rebecca louise law on an installation um that oh, I have yeah, good. Yeah, so um Aaron Guido from Land Studio and Vince Redding from Land Studio. 
And um, for this year's installation, we're proposing working with this artist that does these incredible flower installations and yeah. um, actually hosting it this year inside the inside Brett Hall. Um, this will allow us to actually have the installation up longer. Usually the C also installation is in the Eastman Reading Garden. But this year we're proposing Brett Hall because we can actually have it up um, starting in around May uh, and for a year or more, depending on what the library would like to do with the installation. Um, she's best known for creating these immersive installations with natural materials. She's also um, very good at creating participatory events for installing the artworks and using local for, uh, flowers. Um, so we're excited to work with her on those kinds of things. Um, in addition to the Brett Hall installation, we're proposing that we would switch out two new art wall installations at the Harvard Lee Branch and the South Brooklyn Branch, and then do even one more new art wall location in a location uh, to be determined. Um, so just a couple images so you can see what the um, some of her past, uh, Rebecca's past works look like um, she says her work is for sharing. She makes installations to allow people to interact with nature, to give time to observe and be moved by the beauty of creation. We'll go to the next one. Um, so I think uh, in Brett Hall, we would definitely um, want uh, to have, to still allow for programming and to be able to use the space. So some of the flowers, if not all, would be above. So you could still use the space as you wish, but maybe that we could have some components where you could walk through too. The next. And we'll be working with uh, local in, um, installers to make the framework. Uh, we could have participatory events with different um, community members to install the works, put them together. Um, and Land Studio is also contributing uh, funds to contribute for our time too, um, as part of the project. Next one. And then um, these are the, the art wall installations that are up at the Harvard Lee Branch and South Brooklyn Branch. Um, so these are vinyl installations that can be uh, uh, rotated easily, and we love the, this kind of work, uh, work because we can work with um, all kinds of artists, especially artists that haven't done public art yet before, because all they have to do is give us a digital file and they can do a public art installation that is really of scale for the first time. And then go to the next Thanks. one, and then these are just a couple artists that we're looking at. We'll definitely work with the library to uh, select the final artist for the art wall, but just a couple ideas, um, uh, mostly Cleveland-based artists, but we could look in regionally too for the for the next art wall artists. Welcome any questions. Wow. So those are all real flowers and everything? Yes, so they're oh freeze-dried freeze flowers. Um, oh, so they're yeah. yeah they're dried out. She actually has a library of flowers, so she can bring some, um, and then she could use and freeze dry some local flowers too. So we could do a mix of local and some from her library, depending on you know the color and tone and so that we want. Most people wouldn't realize you could have flowers for a year. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, she said it, she said as long as the library wants. She, the outside. artist is from the UK. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So she's and she's worked all over the world um, on these installations. Um, we definitely want, as a part, because it's going to be in Brett Hall, to have some component on the outside of the library to let you know, hey, there's something really cool inside. So we'll have to determine that with, you know, the library's marketing team and the artists. Um, but we're really excited just to, the longevity of this installation. And, you know, so many people will be able to experience it um, no matter the season. So one more question. Um... Once the exhibit is up, it is ours. She's not going to wipe this back. Is that what you're saying? Like so the flowers will be ours to I, I believe keep or share with she, the public? She would, I, I think she likes to, yeah, she, she said we could keep it up for as long as you want, but she does like to reuse the flowers. Okay. It, it, the ones that survive the installation and she can because she just likes to reuse and recycle. So um, once we are done with it, I think she would take back a portion of the flowers that could be reused just because she likes to reuse them. But um, the ones that we she can't, but and we can keep it up as long as we want. Yeah. Interesting. If you can go back in that to the first <clears throat> slide, I just say, you know, I think this is a um, would be absolutely what our wedding folks will be. Uh, yeah, we're going back too far. But you know, if people come into our library already to take wedding photography, they will be all over this when you see. Well, actually, I was talking about the not the 
the this uh, one. second yeah or third. the second or third when uh yeah the next one that one just imagine being yeah. taking yeah. wedding photography right next to that the people will be like it this will be this will be yeah. awesome I think it'll be amazing. oh yeah and she did make point the artist that the freeze-dried freeze -dried flowers are really light, so <clears throat> the framework will not have to be really intrusive or anything. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much. Ms. Yes. Mr. Sarkin? Oh, definitely. Mr. Corrigan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Yes. Yes. I extended to the resolution to accept gifts for the month of November. Uh, Alan, excuse me, I'm sorry. Can we jump to Exhibit 14? Uh, Erica has other commitments and she would like to speak on that if possible. If I could find it. Yeah. <clears throat> Exhibit 14. Exhibit 14, resolution authorizing agreement with Cleveland State University for America Reads Tutoring Services. We have resolved that the Board of Library Trustees hereby authorizes the Executive Director, CEO, or its designate to enter into an agreement with Cleveland State University for America Reads Tutoring Services from January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023 in an amount not to exceed $78,212 with such expenditures being charged to the Founders Fund account 20380103-53710 Professional Services and which agreement shall be subject to the approval of the Director of Legal Affairs. And Eric, do you want to speak before or after we, we vote? I can speak now. Okay. So this is for our American Reads Tutoring. We have had a long-standing partnership with them. They provide tutoring services in our branch locations. Um, this year or the next year, we're looking to do between 10 to 13 locations. They typically hire about 35 tutors, um, and they do background checks for all of them. They work with students in grades K through 8 and provide um, tutoring on math, reading, um, science, and social studies. Thank you. And these are also available online, but different people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We do offer the, the option, the online option as well. At one time, we talked about uh, many of our children sometimes don't get homework to bring for tutoring. We still take them, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, if they do not have homework, they, if the tutors have worksheets, they also have educational games. Um, to make sure their experience is enjoyable and it's also building a relationship uh, with the with the tutors and providing educational activities. I just call it to, to your attention because I've had inquiries. Well, my son doesn't get homework. And I said, come to the library anyhow. Mm -hmm. So I hope I wouldn't overstep in my boundaries. Oh no. Because no. it was advertised bring your homework. If you get something out there that said, we want you anyhow. I think our numbers may improve. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, I, I hear that a lot. Kids don't have homework, but we still want them learning. We still want to engage them um, in educational activities. And so absolutely, we, if they don't have homework, still come. Yeah. So no further question or comments? Uh, can we move it? You haven't moved it yet. Uh, I move for, uh, for adoption. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Seidel? Yes. Mr. Corrigan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Which one are we all like? Back to uh, exhibit two, I guess. Well, I was hoping we might be able to do our, a quick presentation from our, our ERD group. This was would be in trustee uh, Corrigan space, but our staff is here and uh -huh. instead of see if we can get them back to work. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love looking at your faces, but you were supposed to go back to work. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, John, would you introduce them? Yeah, so uh, this is uh, our new stars groups. This is uh, to get, to get an update about what we accomplished here in 2022. We talked a little bit about 2023 and our key ideas. Start, can we go over there with uh, Heidi? Or no, Leslie? Can you? Okay, so I am Leslie Barrett. I'm the Colts <coughs> Manager and the Chair of our Herb Cut Collective, which is enabling disability CRG here at the Prison Public Library. Um, I do have a miniature slideshow. The Curb Cut Effect, where we got our name, um, is when we design for disabilities, we include and we make things better for everyone. In 2022, the Curb Cut Collective educated staff through a town hall in partnership with the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities, um, talking about the different types of disabilities, whether it would be learning, sight, hearing, physical, or mental disabilities. Um, and we continue that partnership. We brought on an ambassador, ambassador his name is Francisco. He is a DD client of the board and he comes to all of our programming to help assist and welcome our DD people so they see people like them and come oh, to yeah. in the library. Um, in 2022, we also have programs with therapy companies. We had an adaptive paint party. We had a North Point Ballet <laughs> adaptive story time. We had a story time at the Glenville branch that was encompassed through American Sign Language and Bill Morgan of Cleveland Sign Stage. We also had our Sparkles of Joy at Branches. Um, Lexi Kemchek has graciously hosted those. We've had three of those so far, and we continue those, hopefully for the duration of 2023 as well. Tell us what Signs of Joy was last Sparkles of Joy is kind of like Make-A-Wish, but it's made through Make-A-Wish Foundation of the Northeast Ohio <clears throat> chapter where children of disabilities and who have leukemia and uh, are terminally ill come to the library. There is one photo there at the bottom corner at the Rice Branch. They come, they have a specialized adapted story time crafts and play at the library um, with their families. In 2023, we will um, continue those programming. We are looking at bringing a large print library application to CPO for those um, community members who come in, want to get a library card, but can't necessarily read everything on our application. We're also working with Will Scora on um, web access, web content and accessibility. We are looking to also um, do a CPL environmental scan on our services, our programs, our buildings to see where we are when it comes to being accessible for our patrons and where we can go. Um, we um, have had conversations with John Malcolm about adaptive technology. Um, we are um, on the calendar to meet with Mr. Lang um, and FMP about accessibility to our branches. And we wanna continue to um, include and be more accessible for our community members that need us. Uh, good morning, actually, good afternoon. Um, I'm Jaime de Cuera, the branch manager of the South Branch, and I'm the chair of the Latinos Juntos organization, which is the Latinx uh, organization for the library employees. Uh, 2021, we secured uh, presentations by Ann Moore Consultants. Um, two are going to happen to happen this year. There will be two more next year, and I believe two more to follow. Uh, we've also participated in countless uh, community events. Uh, last year, we purchased over three thousand uh, dollars of books that were given away at different community events uh, this year. And uh, I believe like Day that, of the Dead, we definitely gave away a lot of books. Yes, we did. Uh, actually, at the Day of the Dead this year, we gave away over 600 books um, through the parade. And um, actually, this year, we've given over 800 total uh, between different events. And we're looking 
to do the same for next year. So we already have a purchase in, and we also have been working with the uh, book fan in order to uh, secure more books. Um, I'm Steve Capuzzo. I'm the Jefferson Branch Manager. I'm also the chair of the Rainbow Readers, which is the LGBTQIA plus employee resource group. And we were very um, active and visible in Cleveland this year. We went to a lot of events. Um, I'll highlight a few of them here. Um, in February, we presented a collection of books of LGBT themed books to the Beyond Identities Community Center, which is a drop-in center for uh, youth of color at the AIDS Task Force of Greater Cleveland. Where is that located? Uh, it's on Euclid Avenue, maybe just on the other side of the freeway. So like 20th, yeah. 30th. 30th around there. They have a new, they open a new space across the street from the task force, like <clears> there <throat> uh, just before they open and we gave them a shelf of books and it's a really nice space for them to go and hang out and be safe. Uh -huh. Um, in March, um, in partnership with Plexus, which is the LGBT Chamber of Commerce, we sponsored a film at the Cleveland International Film Festival. Uh, we lined up a panel discussion with the help of folks in the literature department and Ohio Center for the Book. Uh, the film fest brought in the film director and we had some local experts and we did a panel discussion after the screening. That was really a good time. Um, Aliyah Lytle from GovDocs kind of spearheaded that uh, partnership. She did a great job. Um, in June for Pride Month, we were especially busy. We went to a number of events. Um, we marched in the Pride and the CLE Parade, which stepped off right in front of Main Library here. Uh, to my knowledge, that was the first time we marched in the parade, and that was really awesome. Uh, we also hosted a booth at the festival. Uh, we made hundreds of buttons for people, and we gave out like rainbow uh, CPL branded rainbow swag. Um, people were very excited to see the library there and to know that we're a welcoming space for everyone. Also during J June, we appeared at the Teen Pop-Up Pride, which is held at the AIDS Task Force. And we also hold it a hosted a table at the Pride and Joy event, which is held in Gordon Square. Uh, the final Pride Month event we helped at was the No Ceiling Thrive with Pride, which is held here in the East um, in October, we also participated in the Pride Ride. We got to decorate one of our uh, library jeeps and we paraded through the city with other organizations. That was really uh, an <laughs> awesome time. Um, last but not least, we hosted a table just this past weekend at the LGBT Center. Uh, they're Queer the Halls, it's their artisan market in Winterfest. Um, that was coordinated by Eric, by Eric Hanshaw News Services. I'm looking forward to 2023. We're um, excited about participating in a lot of these annual events and uh, being, keeping our radar out for other events that we might be able to show up at. And we're also going to try to um, focus on another part of our uh, mission, which is staff education and training. We're looking to line up a speaker to do like a, um, a staff town hall webinar, like other ERGs have done, to kind of um, bring some light to some issues in our community. None of this would be possible without a team effort. Other departments have certainly supported our efforts, which is great. And I'd like to thank our executive sponsor, John Skurdick, um, our co-chair, Adam Tully, and our officers, Michael Oaks, Lisa Sanchez, and Allison Collins. Thank you. I was just wondering, one question. Uh, one of my friends is a trans woman who made the film uh, Exact Change. And one of the things that she did in her one woman play before it turned into a film, and I think it's in the film too, where at the end she gives the statistics on trans um, youth and their attempts at suicide is very, very high, like 40% or something. Right. And I was wondering, I mean, I feel like our, um, it, it's so important to educate in schools and, and to everybody, you know, how vulnerable these kids are. And right now it's a terribly persecuting time in our country, right? Yeah. For that whole community. Yeah, that's, just, you know, personally, I feel that just from growing up. And so that's something that it feels very important that we show that the library is a safe and welcoming space for everyone, you know, they don't have anywhere to go or, you know, so just to, to be at these events safe to space. show that we're a welcoming space for everyone. Yeah, community. I just want to applaud your efforts because it's so important. Thank you. My name is Sally Johnson. I'm a library assistant, new emphasis at the Union Branch. 
Um, and I am the chairperson for our women's PRG. It's hot talk one Tuesday. <laughs> um, my executive team consists of myself, Caroline P, Sandy Jul Jalar Elwell, and Sid Karen Grayson. Um, and our executive cheerleader is Shanice Johnson Thomas. We currently have 10 members and we are always welcoming new members. This year in February, we had two successful Lunch of Mars for Heart Health Month. In March, which is also Women's History Month, we um, supported the women's program that was held here down in May. And we also had four more successful Lunch of Mars. Um, in October, we had a breast cancer awareness along with the mammogram mobile, which was over at the Memorial Nottingham, Memorial Nottingham branch, and which gave the community the opportunity to have um, self-examinations. Our work in progress is our menstrual equity advocacy, which we hope to become CPL policy. But more recently, we are excited to know that monies are, were allocated in the property management budget, BHI and Lane, that would allow feminine products to be available in the stock room for branches to order. We <laughs> place the restaurants to alert patrons to see a staff member to receive the products. We do not have an information date as of yet. So thank you. Thank you. Neither did John have much. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to him again. Hello, <laughs> everybody. Um, this is Noel Parker, manager of the International Language Department. Um, my year, my sponsors here. Uh, uh, this year, we were invited to the Lunar Year program at Asia Plaza in February. We attended a fantastic turnout, had a great time in May. Uh, we attended with marketing the Asia Festival, had a table there. We were mobbed, literally mobbed for <laughs> five straight hours. <laughs> it was great. Uh, people throw a lot of love for CPL. It was good to be there. August, uh, I came out with COVID, <clears throat> couldn't make the one world date. But the rest of my team came up and supported the event. We had a great turnout. We made some money. We were the hit of the show, I guess. So people loved seeing us there. And uh, in November, we had Indigenous Peoples Day. We actually had a staff education day where we had a native speaker come and inform our staff how to you know, think, talk, and, and you know uh, visualize what Native Americans do to our society. So, so it was a great uh, educational moment for me. And uh, I think everyone who attended walked away a better person. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Marvin Benton. I serve as the chair of the Black and White Resource Group under the administrative leadership of Mrs. Parks. And I just wanted to share with you a few things that we did this year. Either we either presented or we did in partnership with some other organization. The first one was the um, Juneteenth celebration on Moral C. We had a um, table there where we had craft activities as long as as well as buddy making buddy making activities. Um, you would be happy to know the visitors to our table were very pleased with the programs and services the library had to offer. Um, more importantly, the staff at the local branches. They were more than pleased with the staff at the local branches. Mm -hmm. um, this past November, we hosted a virtual prostate prostate health awareness program, which was primarily for our staff. And we had about almost 40 people who attended that program and we got a lot of positive feedback as far as uh, from our staff and and going into 2023 we'll be looking to do other stuff like that and build upon that um coming up on december 28th we're going to be doing a positive program at the mlk branch all right with the focus being on the third principle of kwanzaa regime which is collective work and responsibility so if your captains are available and you're free we definitely invite you to come over and again, in 2023, we're looking to expand on our programming and services that we offer. Tell us again the date and place. What That'll be the Martin Luther King branch on December 28th. Oh, and 20, time from 20, 2 to 3.30. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm the director says we'd like to make this an annual thing. We're just amazed by the energy of everyone that works together in the system. And people volunteer to be in these committees because they want to make a difference. And this is just like a snapshot of what they do all year. So thanks, everybody. It's very helpful to hear all of this. But we're making you go back to work anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Seifel, for giving me 
that time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, I think that's so cool, you know, because we're always talking about our diverse yeah. communities and all, all of our diverse programs. So this is a good example and for it to be on our record. Of, this is just a, a little bit of what we're doing year round so that everyone understands how much and where we are in our communities our and how much we're trying to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, doing a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and thank you, Trustee Saifula. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I said, if we get a chance, I'm not trying to give anybody any work, that's for sure. Um, but all the things Lance Studio has done, uh, and this last one just blew my mind. Love it. Let me get a collage somewhere. With oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be, that'd be nice of the be history of stuff. That of their, the yeah, all of their different presentations. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the time we've been working with them yeah. and, and some of the artists. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Do it. Skirty. <laughs> Every time Trustee Harrison said, I'm not giving anybody any work. I'm going to give somebody some extra work. So, John. Yeah. I have my finger partner, John. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go ahead and continue with the finance. Yes. Our exhibit two resolution to accept gifts for the month of November. Uh, it resolved that the gifts described in the gift report for November 2022 be accepted upon the conditions connected with said gifts in accordance with section 3375.40K of the Ohio Revised Code. So moved. Second. Ms. Bice? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Exhibit three, resolution authorizing transfer of funds from the general fund to the building and repair funds and to the debt service fund. Be it resolved that from the general fund unencumbered balance to set aside of $10 million be transferred to the building and repair fund for capital and technology improvements and other capital projects that include the repair, renovation and construction of the library's buildings and that the set aside of $3,282,149.90 for debt service payments be transferred to the debt service fund in January 2023 and the remaining general fund unencumbered balance be carried forward for operating expenditures so moved. Second. Ms. Bunce? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Briggins? Yes. Mr. Hairston. I, I can't vote for Ms. C. Carey. <laughs> <laughs> She's you know, on Zoom, yeah. Is that okay, Carey? I'm, I'm here, can you see me? Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Exhibit four resolution to advance cash from the general fund to the early literacy fund. We are resolved that the Board of Library Trustees authorizes that the general fund advance cash in the amount of $47,214.58 to the early literacy fund for the same purposes for which the fund was established and for which repayment in an equal amount is made within a year or until all requests for reimbursements have been received, so moved. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Mr. Regas? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Exhibit 5, 11th Amendment to the Year 2022 Appropriation. Be a result that the sums indicated in the attached 11th Amendment to the year 2022 appropriation schedule be approved. So moved. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Saifalon? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Exhibit 6, year 2023 annual appropriation measure. Be a result that the year 2023 appropriation measure in the amount of $65,276,234.37 for the general fund and listed amounts for other funds be approved as detailed in the attached schedules. So moved. Second. Ms. Buttons? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Corrigan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. 
Exhibit seven, resolution authorizing amendment to agreement with Unique Management Services Inc. for material and cash recovery services. To be it resolved that the Board of Library Trustees authorizes the Executive Director, CEO as designated to enter into an amendment to the current agreement between the Cleveland Public Library and Unique Management Services Inc. for material and cash recovery services from January 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2023, incorporating a budget neutral guarantee at the cost of $7.95 per account referred in an amount not to exceed $19,884.85 from fees recovered plus amounts waived, which expenditure shall be charged to general fund account 11100053-53710 professional services in which agreement shall be subject to review and approval of the director of legal affairs so moved second and only if i can make a record here as we've developed our relationship with unique over time we find that we're not recovering as much money as we thought when we first started them but we recover many more materials so the net gain to the library is probably in excess of what we would recover if it was funds. Yeah, absolutely. Ms. Thank Glenn. you. So it's work, it's working, it's worth it. In other words, yes. I'm... Mr. Seinfeld. Yes. Mr. Corgan. Yes. Ms. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Hanson. Yes. Ms. Fryer. Yes. And Mr. Parker. Yes. <laughs> Exhibit eight, resolution authorizing maintenance agreement with integrated precision systems. Same. For video surveillance and access control systems, be a result that the Board of Trustees of the Cleveland Public Library hereby authorizes the Executive Director and CEO as designated to enter into an agreement with Integrated Precision Systems Inc. to support services of the library's security cameras and access control systems in the amount not to exceed $69,640.84 for the period commencing January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, subject to the approval of the Director of Legal Affairs, with the expenditure being charged to 12930053-53340, building maintenance, so we'll move. Second. Ms. Buns? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Corrigan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Uh, exhibit nine resolution authorizing an agreement for moving services related to the main library high density mobile storage project. Be a resolve that the Board of Library Trustees hereby authorizes the executive director, CEO, as designated to enter into an agreement with Corrigan Moving and Storage Company. No relation to this Corrigan here. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> DBA cord and moving systems in an amount not to exceed $218,860 for moving services and shelf cleaning, which amount shall be charged to the general fund account 19010053-53710 professional services in which agreement shall be subject to the approval of the library's director of legal affairs. So moved. Second. And as we pointed out at the committee meeting Tuesday, uh, this is the achievement of, of the planning we did when we built this building, that we have these high density floors and are able to relocate literally tens of thousands of books to make them more available and to preserve them better. And, and it's really significant that the cost we incurred for making this building possible to do this high density storage has now been fully realized in the sense of uh, savings and improved services. So, uh, and for those who weren't here Tuesday, Michael Ruffin has offered a, a tour to anybody at any time to see, because it's really an interesting project. And uh, if, if you care to know more about it, Michael Ruffin. I was just gonna chat. tell Jasmine in case you didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah. so. I'd love to. Ms. Yes. Mr. Sankalo. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Anyone else is doing yes. <coughs> tell me I'll go with you. <laughs> Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Ms. Parker? Yes. Exhibit 10 resolution to ratify purchase of promotional items for the Cleveland Reads campaign. 
be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Cleveland Public Library hereby ratifies the purchase by the library on December 6, 2022 from Scranton Road Promotional Marketing for promotional items to be distributed to patrons as part of the Cleveland Reads campaign for a total amount of $72,088.30 with the expenditure being charged to the Founders Fund account 20380102-52900 other supplies and further declares such expenditures to be a proper public purpose. So moved. Second. Ms. Buttons? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Hanston? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Exhibit 11 resolution authorizing upgrades to Lewis Stokes Wynn Public Elevator. <laughs> Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Cleveland Public Library hereby authorizes the expenditure of $109,675.64 with Cone Inc. for upgrades to the three public elevators located in the Lewis Stokes Wing, with the expenditures being charged to the general fund account 12100053-53310 building repairs and authorizes the executive director CEO as designated to execute any instruments or agreements as are necessary to effectuate such expenditure, which shall be subject to the approval of the Director of Legal Affairs. So moved. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Simon. going to make it Mr. safer. Huh? A rope gripper makes it safer. Mr. Simon. Doesn't yeah. sound like it. <laughs> 109,000 of rope grippers. <laughs> yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Hanston? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Exhibit 12 resolution authorizing blanket purchase orders in excess of $25,000. <clears throat> we are resolved that the Board of Library Trustees authorizes the fiscal officer to issue a blanket purchase order not to exceed $50,000 for purchases from Best Buy Tire and Automotive Service LLC for the year 2022. So moved. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Seifelon? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Hampson? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? <clears throat> Exhibit 13, Resolution Amended Project Budget for the Lorraine Branch. Be it resolved that the Board of the Board of Library Trustees approves the amended total project budget for the Lorraine Branch as set forth in Exhibit A to this resolution and be it further resolved that the Board of Library Trustees authorizes the Chief Operating Officer to reallocate the budgeted amount set forth in Exhibit A from the owner's contingency funds furniture, fixtures, and equipment, owner direct costs, and architect fees as needed, provided that such reallocation shall not increase the overall project budget for the Lorraine branch, and be a further resolve that the Board of Library Trustees authorizes the Executive Director, CEO, or his designee to move forward in taking the steps necessary to repair the Lorraine branch and to execute such instruments or documents as may be necessary or appropriate to effectuate the terms of this resolution, including those in excess of $25,000 and which are payable from the project budget amended herein. So moved. Second. I do have um, one question. When we talked about this on Tuesday, um, I don't think any of us asked the question about whether this affects, I mean, I'm sure it could affect when we're going to reopen that branch. and. Um, but I don't need, actually understand why this should affect the construction budget. I mean, we're going to get insurance. We're going to pay our deductible of $25,000. And um, like we discussed Tuesday, the library chose to hold the in construction builders risk policy for the Rain Branch and all the FFP projects um, rather than put that on the construction manager because we get better premiums. Um, so it's true that all the uh, all the expense of the repairs should come back to the library less our deductible. 
However, that will take some time and we need the budget authority now to authorize the construction manager to proceed with the repairs. So that's what this resolution is. Right. We had hoped to open the Marine Branch in March around the exact date now, but I think it'll probably be April. So the order of magnitude of the schedule. Delay. So we might go to April instead of March. Then. Yeah, so it's, a, I mean, it's a couple of weeks to a month delay. It's not, not, not that big delay. a delay. Thank you. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Seinfeld? Yes. Mr. Corbin? Yes. Ms. Marie? Yes. yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Frenier. <clears throat> yes. Exhibit 14, resolution authorizing agreement with Cleveland State University for America Reese Tutoring Services. We did that. Oh. Yeah, 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 that's, that's the one here. that's the one we took out of order mm. at so the we beginning. Did, did we vote on it? Yeah, we did yeah, vote we did. on it. I must have missed something. There. You voted, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I voted twice then. Yes. Did I vote for it too? Yes, you did. John, we're on the same page. <laughs> now we go to West Virginia. <laughs> we vote all for <laughs> Exhibit 15, resolution authorizing amendment to agreement for the removal of existing chiller at Lakeshore facility. Uh, resolve that the Board of Trustees authorizes the executive director, CEO, or his designee to amend the agreement with the AKA team, Inc. For it to increase the fee by $742.50, thus bringing the total contract to an amount not to exceed $43,632.50, with expenditure being charged to the building and repair fund account 4014110-55300, construction improvements, and which amendments shall be subject to the approval of the Director of Legal Affairs so moved. Second. By the way, this is fascinating to me that the refrigerant can be stored and reused eventually. I don't know in what way it's stored or whatever, but that's because it's very expensive to replace. It is. We, we know that because before we did the Lake Shore Chiller replacement, which this board approved last year, which this was part of the overall project, we were having to recharge it frequently. And so it's expensive. I'm voting yes. Mr. Seifelon? Yes. Mr. Corgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Uh, the rest of my report is fiscal officer's report, report A, report on investments, report B, report on conference and travel expenditures, report C, report on all vendor, vendor expenditures, report D, Report on expenditures made from the owner's contingency funds for Huff, Jefferson, West Park, Woodland, Central Distribution Facility, Lorraine, Eastman, MLK Jr., Brooklyn, and Rockport branches, Report E, and the report on expenditures made from the owner's contingency fund for the high density shelving project, Report F. That concludes my report, sir. Thank you, Trustee Seifla. At this time, I move to adjourn into executive session for the purpose of discussing the performance and compensation of a public employee and for the purpose conferring with counsel to discuss pending or imminent court action. Second. Ms. Butts? Yes. Mr. Seifel? Yes. Mr. Morgan? Yes. Ms. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Fryer? Yes. And Mr. Parker? Yes. Uh, we... I said we move to the North Conference Room by turning off all of the microphones.